HPE um, this week had their big Discover event. You and I have been tuning in since Monday. It really ran all week long. Ton of announcements. You've written a few pieces on, on Forbes, some good ones. We've got a bunch of the different announcements highlighted. You and I both did some on-camera analysis. I believe you, you, you jumped on the cube and talked about it. I actually did the post-mortem on Antonio's keynote right on the HPE's uh, you know, uh, event network. So we were getting early and often, Pat. We were looking and talking about it. Um, it'll be hard for us to kill all the oxygen here because there's so many things to talk about. I'll let you go first and see if you leave me at least a few things to chomp on at the end. Yeah, so first off, this was the most comprehensive discover that I've seen in probably five years. I think it was four years ago, Antonio uh, introduced um, Green Lake um, in uh, Western Europe. But this was just, was just it, it was huge. And what I'm going to talk about is Green Lake. And, you know, the announcements came over really a two week period, right? They made acquisitions, they, they updated Green Lake, they just they pretty much updated uh, everything. Um, and I'm going to um, uh, prov uh, show you my article because it's it's pretty awesome uh, on on Forbes. But basically, um, they took enterprise on-prem as a service infrastructure to the next level. Uh, they they did two things. First of all, uh, they they went vertical, and they went vertical in areas that um, I, I feel like. HP has core competencies in, and also that there are robust ISVs. So GreenLake for 5G core systems. So basically 5G as a service, uh, and that's using their own uh, software. GreenLake for EMR, uh, using Epic and Cerner. GreenLake for Splunk. Uh, we had we interviewed uh, Splunk CEO Doug Merritt, which was uh, awesome on that. And also we interviewed... Uh, Kumar Shrikanti, HPE CTO and software head uh, for the uh, Six Five Summit. So going vertical, right? It's natural, right? You you build out horizontal, and then uh, and then you go and then you go vertical. Uh, and not that they're done going horizontal. Is by the way, I'm I'm going to leave all the horizontal stuff uh, uh, to you. Uh, but they also came out with this new service. Uh, called Lighthouse. So HPE GreenLake Lighthouse. And essentially what this is, is more of a cloud-like experience when it comes to options, order processing, and setup. So, you know, I've talked to some HPE, cust HPE GreenLake customers and some partners, and there's still a lot of paperwork involved. And you can literally get all the options on-prem with GreenLake and and you know you want to you want another network adapter sure we'll we'll bring that in right you want it from Lenovo you you know we'll, we'll integrate everything for you Lighthouse is uh, GreenLake going on scale less options less complication for partners um, and I think this is truly their big play and if I look out five years I would say seventy five percent of their sales. On uh, sorry uh, of their service revenue uh, is going to be uh, Lighthouse um, and Daniel. Uh, actually, let me add one more, and I'll flip it over to you. HPE introduced Silicon on Demand, and Silicon on Demand. By the way, uh, IBM Z has been doing this forever, where they have latent cores, or you can reassign cores to do other work. Or you can add cores during peak times and spend only spend more money then. So partnering with Intel and HP is the first one to do this, and I I, I believe they've got a six month exclusive on this. Where um, let's say you come in with a forty core processor, and you're only paying for twenty five. You only need twenty five, but when you need the other fifteen cores, uh, you pay more for the service. You pay more for GreenLake. Uh, and I think that's that's brilliant. I think that's so smart, and that gets more to a cloud model. That's what you do with AWS. You need more processors. You need more servers. You go up there and you you go to the AWS cloud console and you add more servers. So uh, hats off to these guys. Um, I, I feel like Daniel, they did move it forward. I still think they're the one to beat right now. 
right now. Uh, this is a marathon, not a sprint. Dell Technologies is going to go after them from a uh, a scale play, right? PCs and infrastructure and a lot more diverse infrastructure, right? Like Isilon is um, essentially mainframe storage, right? Uh, HP doesn't do that stuff. Uh, and then you'll have pure plays like Pure who are rocking it and, and I think have an exceptional storage uh, uh, as a service function. So they're in the lead. There's a lot of competition, a lot of, a, a lot of opportunity for people to move uh, places here. Yeah, absolutely, Pat. So a lot of ground covered there. I think I want to just touch quickly on where we're at with HPE. Remember, it was um, going on uh, two plus years ago that Antonio Neri, CEO, came out and said, we are going to be the XS company or the everything as a service company. If you would have at the time told me that the company would be this far along in terms of building out its services, I would have probably never believed you. Um, but he had this, said that in my article too. This, this yeah. was this was a big iron metal core, you know, infrastructure company made its 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 life on selling big, <laughs> hard <laughs> infrastructure that big dollars. And this kind of pivot is is you cannot underestimate the complexity of making this type of shift. However, I give a lot of credit to the executive team. I give a lot of credit to Antonio, some key hires like Keith White, who's leading the green light business, came in from Microsoft, brought a much more software centric mentality into the business. Um, and, 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 you know, the company's kind of doing a few things that I think have been really impressive. First, it has done a good job of bringing these services. What you mentioned with Lighthouse, look, we are seeing the forces come to the middle. The forces of public cloud is not the answer for everything. The public cloud is addressing this through a series of, of, of upgrades and improvements and new offerings to be more hybrid focused. But these companies, enterprises have massive deployments of infrastructure uh, on-prem in their own data centers. And doing the public cloud version of hybrid isn't easiest for all of these companies. And HPE, and to your, as you mentioned, Dell, Cisco, IBM, they all understand this and they're trying to build better and better mouse traps to address this. The other thing I think HP has done really well is verticalizing in terms of industry vertical, uh, coming out with approaches to deal with some of these really complex industries. So financial services and healthcare. Um, in industries where you have high demands for regulatory compliance, they're building out and structuring offerings that have been really pre-canned with best practices incorporated to deal with compliance and regulatory needs. Um, just a couple, one other thing to mention, Pat, I also thought there was some good launches. You had a great piece on Aurora. Um, there, you know, security is being a zero trust. Where'd you hear that in this podcast? Uh, zero trust approach uh, to security um, through, uh, through HPE. That's a big announcement that took place here not something to be ignored because there were so many announcements though. Um, it, we didn't even get to that. And then the other thing, there was like uh, an acquisition that came out on Monday before a company called Determined AI. Um, and, and, you know, the ML and training capabilities, uh, you know, and, and, and HPE having a software narrative to develop uh, scale. Um, and, and this was a full stack thing. It wasn't a dollar disclosure. Um, so we don't know, you know, the size of this deal, but from a capability standpoint, you're talking about a, from data prep to model training and development to model deployment, a new stack that's pretty comprehensive, plugs into the public cloud, plugs into on-prem, supports the biggest, uh, you know, everything from Apache Spark all the way through to TensorFlow. Um, so that people can build, deploy, train, scale their AI. And this is something that's going to be a really big thing going forward. 